Well, hello again, everybody. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about sport in Rome and more particularly the sport of chariot racing, easily the most popular uh, sort of sport, more popular even than gladiator shows. Uh, it was another sort of activity in Rome that the Romans uh, didn't really invent themselves. They uh, took this from the Greeks. The Greeks have been chariot racing and horse racing in hippodromes for many centuries before the Romans really got going on the idea. Uh, the biggest and most famous chariot racing arena of all was the Circus Maximus in Rome, which literally means the biggest circus or the very big circus. But it wasn't the only one in Rome. There was also uh, a, a chariot racing arena uh, built by or built uh, under the auspices of Domitian, the Emperor Domitian, late first century AD. That's on uh, the site of the Piazza Navona. If you go to the Piazza Navona, probably the most expensive place in the world to buy ice cream, incidentally. But should you go to the Piazza Navona, admiring your, uh, uh, eating your ice cream, you can admire uh, the layout of the Piazza, which is on uh, the, exactly the site of Domitian's Circus. But Nero had a circus that was on what is now the Vatican Hill, as well as staging races. That was also a place of execution, quite probably the place of execution of St. Peter, as I noted in the Roman executions video. Anyway, uh, who went to the chariot races? Well, pretty much everybody did. They were very, very popular with all classes, all genders. Everybody wanted to go to the chariot races. There were a number of reasons why you might do that. Uh, one of them was that you might enjoy the thrill and the spectacle of watching chariots being raced skillfully and fast uh, around the course. Another was that you might be excited by uh, the crashes that you might see. Uh, you might be following a particular charioteer. There were some individual big stars. As Marshall notes, uh, he writes uh, quite a moving uh, lament for a dead charioteer called Scorpus. Uh, he writes an epigram about him, um, about how he, uh, the, the poem, the, uh, it's used as a metaphor, uh, the chariot race is used as a metaphor for his life. So the faster he went round the course, the faster he got through his life and he got to the end all too soon in Marshall's opinion. It's quite a moving, uh, moving poem that, um, and quite untypical of Marshall, much of which is way too obscene for, for me to present on here. Uh, but not everybody, uh, why else might you, why else might you uh, like the chariot races? Well, there was betting. Betting was a huge business and uh, the Romans were very, very keen uh, to bet on their particular teams. They bet on the colours. Each each team, there were four teams, had a colour, reds, greens, blues and whites. The Emperor Domitian tried to add two more teams uh, in his time, the purples and the golds, very imperial, but they didn't really catch on because people were devoted to their colours, just as people are devoted in families to football clubs uh, as they are these days. So, uh, lots of people went, uh, the upper classes went, some uh, emperors were particularly obsessed with them. The Emperor Caligula, uh, notably, uh, was said to have uh, uh, done things like um, uh, built, built marble stables uh, with ivory mangers for his uh, favourite racehorse in Kitatus, the stables of the chariot racing team. Uh, given a vast prize, uh, a vast present to a charioteer called Eutychus, whom he favoured. Nero wanted not just to see chariot racing, he wanted to be a charioteer, did a bit of training himself. And then, as Suetonius so splendidly says, uh, he offered himself up, a bit of a seedy illusion there, offered himself up to the eyes of all uh, in the Circus Maximus, uh, racing as a charioteer. Uh, it doesn't record what, happened, what the result of that race was, but maybe it would be the same as... Uh, the poetry competitions that he entered where he always won the prize in, on one occasion, even though he wasn't even in the country where the, the competition was being held. Still, not everybody approved. And there were writers such as Pliny of, uh, of, who disapproved quite a lot and said that people like him, they just didn't like that kind of thing. I guess it's a bit like uh, how some uh, intellectuals these days uh, can't understand how the noble sport of football uh, is attractive to anybody. Anyway, here is what Pliny has to say. I've been spending all the last few days amongst my notes and paper in most welcome peace. How could I in the city? The races were on, a type of spectacle by which I have never had the slightest attraction. I can find nothing new, nothing different in them. One scene is enough. 
So it surprises me all the more that so many thousands of adult men should have such a childish passion for watching galloping horses and drivers standing in chariots over and over again. If they were attracted by the speed of the horses or the driver's skill, one could perhaps account for it, but it's the racing colours they really support and care about. And if the colours were to be exchanged in mid-course during a race, they would transfer their favour and enthusiasm and rapidly desert the famous drivers and horses whose names they shout as they recognise them from afar. Such is the popularity and importance of a worthless shirt. I don't mean with the crowd, which is worth less than the shirt, but with certain serious-minded men. When I think how this futile, tedious, monotonous business can keep them sitting endlessly in their seats, I take pleasure in the fact that their pleasure is not mine. And I have been very glad to fill my idle hours with literary work during these days, which others have wasted in the idlest of occupations. Well, Pliny being a bit smug and self-important there, but I guess there's nothing new in that. So, charioteers, who were they and uh, how much did they earn? Well, we know that Scorpius was a famous charioteer. It's famous enough for Marshall to write uh, an eloquent lament for him. Probably the most famous of all was a guy called Diocles. He uh, was a charioteer. His career lasted 24 years, the early second century AD. Um, and he retired at the age of 42. During his lifetime, it's estimated that in, in modern terms, he earned somewhere between 100 and 150 million pounds. So that would put him well on track for being one of the, uh, one of the most highly paid sports stars of all time. We know they were popular with uh, all sorts of people. There's loads of graffiti about charioteers and who's supporting which one. Diocles uh, uh, raced for three out of the four chariot racing teams in his lifetime uh, for the Blues and for the Greens, and he uh, latterly spent uh, 14 years of his career uh, driving for the Reds. It was important to keep the masses entertained. The poet Juvenal, early 2nd century AD, said that you could do more or less what you liked to people, provided that you gave them panem et circenses. Bread and the circus, bread and circuses, as it's traditionally translated, what it really means is bread and the games. If you feed people, if you give them the basic necessities of life, if you give them entertainment, they're not really bothered about freedom. Now, I've been wondering what the modern equivalent of that might be. Would that be perhaps beer and football, TV and toilet roll, availability of decent Wi Fi? I wonder what our government and the governments uh, around the world would consider the things which they've got to give their people uh, if they were to withdraw them or if there was to be a problem with the supply of which that would cause them to riot. I'll leave you with that thought today. More on sport in a future episode.